How about something like that? Oh, that's way better. That's perfect. Hello. Okay, hold on. Here we go. Hello, friends. Welcome back. I know that it's been a long time, but, you know, I've been dabbling in a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Uh, this will be a drum video, but we're going to talk about how to use a Shure SE30. And if you come across one in the wild, I can tell you all the things that you'll need to do on the insides to bring them back to life. More likely than not, it's not going to, it's going to pass audio, but it's not going to compress. The gating function is not going to work. The lights won't work. Um, so that's what I did with these bad boys. So the point of this video is we are going to try these out in uh, different ways on the drums and see how or see why they're so legendary. Uh, they're in different states of completion in regards to upgrades and stuff, but we're going to try them out on drums and see how they sound. And this will also be sort of a tutorial video because it seems like people that use these or that get them thinking that they're using them to get a certain drum sound, they're not using them correctly. They'll have certain functions turned on when they were supposed to have them turned off. All right, so let's open up the top on one and let's kind of go over what we'll be talking about, like the different sections of the unit. So here we have um, the insides here. We have the output transformers, the input transformers. Um, it's got five PC boards, one, two, three, four, and five. That all usually kind of need some sort of work. Um, also a power supply section as well. So for board one, that's where most of like the inputs would go through. I went ahead and replaced pretty much all of the capacitors in there with Wemas. You can tell because they're red and they look like quite silly compared to other capacitors. As well as on board one, two, three, four, you can see I've replaced uh, even more capacitors with Wemas. Um, apart from that, I replaced a few transistors. Um, it's got all new capacitors, uh, like electrolytic ones here. And I've replaced a lot of um, resistors in here. Uh, people say that it helps lower the noise floor. but um, So you're supposed to calibrate these things using voltages. There's test voltages in the schematic. But I don't want to do that because it already sounds great. I've already played with it for a little while. So let's go over some of the functions. Like say you'll be using this for drums. Let's go ahead and talk about how. So when you turn it on for the first time, um, you have the lights turn on and you have the VU meter and stuff like that. You need to be aware of this, uh, this gate function right here uh, and the response rate. These are very important, especially when you're trying to use the compressor. So check it out. Let's say you wanted like big explosive drums. So that's when you're going to activate compression, but turn off gating. Don't have both of these on just like that. Just have it on like that. Sorry, I have these cable wraps on these cables because of the cats. It's really annoying. So this, you can switch between VU and dB compression for the meter. So here's me testing out the meter on input three. So as we get louder and louder, oh, hello, 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 hello. And then we can turn it up, hello, hello. So we have the VU meter working now, that's great. So let's go to compression. Here's how we can tell how the, that the compressor works. So we'll just do it in little spurts like this. We'll start out with a fast response rate. See how it drops pretty quickly? What you can do is you can adjust this to make the drum sound really cool. So let's bump it up to four. Look at that. It's pretty crazy. So obviously you would adjust this to, um, in my mind, what I would adjust this for is like if the speed of the song so that the weird sucking level locking noise of compression will kind of match the song because you don't want it to be too fast when it's, it's a super slow song or but obviously just play around with it until you find something that you like. Yeah. Okay. And then the second feature that I would use this for is turning on the gate function in the back so that both functions are on. And now look how the compression changes. What it does, it compresses to a certain point and then it holds it. So it gives you a very um, gated sound. Check it out. Oh, it's holding. Check, 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 check check and then it kind of readjusts itself every so often every time it gets more signal there you go so i would use that for the side of the snare so and so it would just go cha cha 
So everything in between the hits is pretty quiet. So it cha, cha. So we'll try it out a few on a few different variations, and we'll see what. Yeah. Okay. This is compressed. This is the snare, just dry. Now this is with the compressor on the snare uh, with compression on on the back and then gating turned off. Now this is the snare mic with compression on the back of the Shure enabled and the gating. You can see the red indicator. So here's the other Shure SC30. I saved this one from eBay. It was spray painted black. Um, the unit passed only distorted audio. Um, I basically saved it from death, probably. So this is a test of the compressor when we go ahead and drive it with more compression. Here we go.
So we heard it on drums, on the snare mic, and in the overhead mic. Sounds pretty sick, especially when you drive it. So let's try it with bass and see if it's even more versatile. So this is dry. So here's bass with a little bit of drive and compression from the Shure SE30. So that was a little demonstration of the Shure SE30. If you find one in the wild, please capture it. Um, and if you need help bringing it back to life, come talk to me. Um, I'll link in the description all the upgrades that happened to one of them and then some of the upgrades for the other one. And um, yeah. All right. Bye-bye.